What is going on, fellas? We are on day two of owning the C8. It's uh, it's a little dark, so hopefully you guys can still hear me or see me. Uh, I guess we'll see when I uh, play back the video, but just wanted to give you some next day impressions after having the car for uh, not even a full day. By the time we left the museum, we spent most of the time driving on the highway. So uh, anyhow, we took the top off, something I didn't get to do yesterday. So that definitely adds a, uh, uh, a different element to the driving experience. And again, I'm sorry if it's too noisy or loud. I really hope you can hear me. But anyways, that, you know, the target tough just adds to that driving experience. Being able to do a little wind noise there when I pop this thing out. But you guys know I also have a Jeep and that's one of the things that makes the Jeep so much fun is being able to take the top off and the doors and uh, some folks like Justin at Atlanta Custom Wraps also take the doors off of a Corvette too. Check his videos out for some of that wild stuff. But anyways, we, um, you know, we really love that feature of, of, of a Jeep. And so I'm not a big fan of convertibles myself. Although the, the Corvette convertible and some of these other convertible like the McLaren or a Lambo, something like that, they're really small tops, right? So you're not really uh, uh, dealing with a huge big top and a four-seater. So nothing against them, but it's just not for me. But if you enjoy it, hey, all pow more power to you, right? Uh, but anyways, here we are cruising down, playing a little weekend. And uh, man, I just, I, I've been using my Z button right here. So that's touring mode right there when I take it off, where it writes a lot better, smoother, uh, not as aggressive. And when I wanna hear that exhaust burble and, and bring up the shifts and, and firm up the suspension, click that Z button, it changes instantly. And you can kinda hear the exhaust tune a little bit. I just love that sound for stock exhaust I know a lot of people change it right away but I think it sounds pretty darn good uh, but I love that Z button that's pretty awesome where you can you know uh, when you switch with the jog wheel down here that does take a few more seconds where you have to kind of click 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 I mean it's pretty fast don't get me wrong but uh, it does take a few seconds to change so the C button once again you know look how fast the dash changes you know we're talking about a second if that and it gets pretty quiet even if I give it a little bit of gas you don't hear a whole lot and let me get this truck to uh, turn here and we'll turn on the Z button again so I'll turn it on you guys can hear the exhaust a little bit too bad and again I'm not flooring it yet or anything like that and I'm trying to stay under those 4500 rpms although it creeps up pretty quickly to uh, 5,000 uh, we've got about 366 miles on it now so you know just wanted to give you some quick thoughts on the, the next the day after driving experience with the top off again to me that's been one of my favorite things about a Corvette because they've had a target top option for so long and I'm not a convertible person, so I just love that. And, you know, taking the top off, you can do it by yourself. There are a few videos out there that show how to do it by yourself. Uh, I mean, it's literally two little levers, one here, one there, and then the center back right over here. So it's not super hard. It doesn't weigh a bunch. I mean, I think it weighs somewhere around, uh, I, I, you know what, I'm going to have to look it up because I'm not sure. Uh, but it's not super heavy at all, so doing it yourself isn't hard by any means. Just making the uh, way to make a left here. And so it's a one-man job. It can be done, but if you've got somebody to help you out, probably a lot easier. The, the tricky part, because I was actually surprised how hard it snaps in in the back. So once you get those little tubes that go in here i don't know if you can see the holes but they uh the little pins or whatever they go in here there's one on either side of, of uh the top you have to align those in the in the trunk itself and then you kind of clip in each side of uh of the top itself 
on the upper corners, right? So it's nice and secure in there, won't move around no matter how hard you drive, but you gotta make sure that it clips in there, otherwise you're gonna be throwing your top all over the inside of the trunk. Now it is lined pretty well, so hopefully, even if it got loose somehow, you don't, you know, you don't scratch it or bang it up, but man, I just, I've always wanted a Targa top, always loved that aspect of, of cars. If you bought something in the 80s or 90s with a Targa top, uh, Targa top, more than likely it's going to leak. So that's something you don't have to worry about in, in uh, today. I will say there is one thing I would have liked. I, I like wearing a hat, as you can see, mostly because I'm bald, as you know, in some of my other videos, if you follow. And uh, it would have been nice to have some sort of wind deflector that pops up just a little bit when, when you take the Targa top off because right now if I stick my head even just a little bit uh, I can see the wind catching my hat with my nice glasses that I love and uh, you know throwing it back somewhere so that would be one little thing that if I had to change I would uh, you know I would ask uh, the Corvette or Chevy engineers to uh, to update right so I hope you guys can hear me with all that noise but man, absolutely love the car. I'm falling in love with it by the minute. And uh, I just, you know, so far I don't have any, any major complaints or anything like that. Uh, it, it does take a little while to get used to. Keep in mind, I'm coming from the Viper where I'm shifting my own gears. So maybe dual clutches are like that. Uh, but the dual clutch and maybe the computer still learning a few things, my driving style perhaps. Uh, it does it does shift kind of quirky sometimes especially in the aggressive modes definitely not a lot of fun to drive like that in traffic and probably wasn't designed to do that anyways right so uh, I like to go to touring mode in traffic but it's still it's still a little clunky uh, but I, I mean I, I've heard complaints about for example and not comparing this to to an Aventador but that single clutch transmission you know that's like one of the things that's a dream car of mine that I hope someday I get to own. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I've read and heard, and again, just from what I've seen, I could be off, that that's one of the worst supercar, sports car transmissions out there uh, that you can get because the, the single clutch just doesn't shift all that great. Uh, or maybe just isn't fun in traffic itself, right? So, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, loving the car, smells incredible. Because I left the top off yesterday, I drove it a little bit yesterday when I got home uh, from the museum itself. The whole garage smelled like a new car, which was nice. And here's a better look at the GT2 seats. Uh, I'm a pretty husky guy, as you guys know, in case you're wondering, they are pretty tight. The LT, uh, the 3LT trim, I believe adds power lumbar and side bolsters or maybe that's just with the GT2 seats I'm not entirely sure um, so you can adjust the bolsters and you can adjust the lumbar so if you're a little huskier like me you can maybe loosen up the you know the lumbar uh, a little bit and and of course the bolsters themselves open it up a little bit more but you know I'm, I'm 5'7 pretty short and I'm not gonna say how much I weigh because I'm too damn embarrassed but I fit fine in these GT2 seats. Uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to do the GT3. That's super hardcore, and uh, I don't plan to do a ton of tracking. I, I would like to see what it can do, especially at Road Atlanta. It would be nice to go uh, run a couple laps over there, and maybe an autocross event. I like autocross because they're usually a little bit safer, right? Uh, the worst thing you can hit is a cone, and you can put some you know, some plastic protection on there or some tape and not worry too much about hitting a cone where at a track you can hit a wall you can just slide into the grass and do a ton of damage to the car so anyways those are my thoughts on day two of driving around we're still waiting to break it in so we can test some more things but hope you enjoy if you're not following the channel give us a follow